again and again details on that but away from that in what could be described as one of the biggest monetary scams of all time luxury smitten pastors leading twisted money focused churches are first emerging in kenya preying on unsuspecting congregants they use first class flights driving expensive chauffeured cars and they have no qualms displaying their wealth openly in broad daylight you're just about to discover the world of these spiritual vampires and how they feed on your money through faking miracles and displaying fake powers all in the name of god the inside source kt news crimes and in Investigations reporter Francis Ontomo has more. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. God bless you. God be with you. Our Father in heaven bless you today and uh, always. I bring you greetings in his name, in the name of our Lord and most precious Savior, Jesus Christ, the King of Kings. How are you today? And I hope that this video meets you well. All right. Um... You see, I want to do some kind of um, a series, and this series may be up to three or four. And you see, if you have a burden, if you have a burden in your heart, sometimes this thing can take away food from you. I am doing this. These are some of the preachers in Kenya, and um, there is, there is, a, you know, there are other videos I will serialize here on particular. A particular pastor and a prophet who has taken this whole thing to a very higher level he learned it from his mother and when his mother was you know laid off business he took it to a very you know gargantuan level very very high that it took the confession of his co-travelers to unearth this. You know why I'm saying this is that sometimes when there is a burden in your heart, I'm not speaking up for anybody here, but for those of you in Kenya, you know, who seem to be misunderstanding the outburst of Takim, please don't bring nationality into this, I beg you, because some of you may begin to say, I'm talking for him now because he's a Nigerian. Before I started listening to the man, I never knew he was a Nigerian until I got to know. And uh, I, I don't need to tell you how I got to know that he is a Nigerian. So I, I only suspected from his tone, from his accent, I knew that that accent was not coming from a, a, you know, a Kenyan. Actually, the first of his videos that I ever listened to was when he taught on first fruit. And you know, I, I've had issues with the teachings on first fruit. And you know, the idea about you gathering everything you made in January. To go and give now not taking into consideration that that january you are not going to leave um rent free you are not going to be sponsored to go to your business or to go to the place of work you're not going to be sponsored. the food you are going to have even if first fruit is is right all right i have my reservations against that and there are some people that will hear me and they will they will they will attack me even physically i know that some will call me on phone hearing what I'm saying now. But you know, it has it has gotten to the level where we must say the truth. You see, sometimes people people misunderstand, you know, my, my comportment as weakness. I'm not weak, but I chose to be, by the grace of God, a Christian. I may not be very, you know, vociferous. I may not be very, very, you know, harsh in talking about people. But then that doesn't mean that I don't know the truth. I know the truth and it is also fine and good that we give people a chance. Now, what I'm saying here is that there are so many of us in Nigeria who are here. We are seeing the decadence, you know, within the church and with all the risk that it takes. And by the grace of God, we are doing the little we are doing. You see, I, I see some persons who come to insult me that, you know, I don't talk harsh enough. I don't have to be harsh. And I don't have to be hard. Those of those people you are looking at, and you're saying these people is hammering it. These people is insulting everybody. I don't have to insult, mind you, but I tell you that majority of them, if they are in this country, they won't even do half of what we are doing. But I'm not doing this. I'm not asking you to give credit to me. I don't serve you. I'm not serving you. I'm serving God. And if I make mistake, 
I make mistake in the process of me trying to please him and do it in my own way. At times, I may say some things that you may not agree with. I may say some things that you don't like. It is part of life. So what I'm trying to say here is that now, Apostle Takim, having gone through falsehood and having been a victim of falsehood himself, according to what I've heard him say, now came to a land that has been corrupted by the practices they learned from Nigeria. Now, it is common, it is very natural for him to be as raw as he is. And it will be surprised. I've not, I've not really met him in person, but I've spoken with him on phone. And then that man is as down to earth as, as, as anybody you can consider to be humble. Now, but you remember David said that the zeal of the house of the Lord has eaten me up. And I guess the zeal of the house of the Lord and the foolish things that is happening in the church is what is eating this man up. Now, I want to bring you some of the nice work that was done by Katie and crew members that took on the evil and wicked things that are happening in some of the churches in Kenya. Here, they're going to profile about three pastors, plus your very popular prophet Owar, who said that you must go through him, you must pass through him to get to heaven. I've brought you that video here. So please, pay attention and be very, very objective in your listening. Don't be close-minded. You may be implicated in this video. Your pastors may be one of those that they have covered. But I'd like you to listen and listen as a Christian. If you truly know the word of God and know that some of these wicked men, I mean, there are three pastors here. One, they just touched on one and left him. I will bring you the documentary on that one. But there are three pastors here that have been profiled in this video. And you are going to be shocked. You may have been one of those that have been milked, but you never knew. You may have been those that have stepped into false worship of a man, but you never knew in Kenya. Uh, God bless you. Happy viewing. Uh, I'll be seeing you at the end of the video. So I'll let you go on and have it. Enjoy it as it comes your way now. Thank you very much. And God bless you. time truth television the channel for the lovers of truth for the truth of the end time so if you are a lover of truth give us a subscription and god bless you shalom When the people reach the breaking point, then anything that offers better answer uh, becomes very, uh, very useful for them. Lakini hawa ni pretenders ambao wanastahili kushtakiwa kotini.
In a country of over 50 million people, Kenya still lags behind many middle-income countries in the world. More than half the population live below the poverty line, and the struggle for basic needs is incredible. For many, the Kenyan dream is to amass wealth, own cars, houses, money, and power. And to tap into this need, today churches are emerging promising all this, but only if one can trust and obey and give generously. It is almost difficult even for the Kenyan government to keep count of the number of mushroomy gatherings meeting all over in the name of God. Every other day, independent churches are emerging, new prophets anointed, and this environment just keeps expanding. And this dream is buoyed up by what is now popularly now referred to as the prosperity gospel. A gospel that views prosperity as a sign of spiritual blessing. Here in Kenya, preaching has just become big business. It would almost look like a scene cut from a movie or simply a skit. Almost dramatic, almost laughable. But yes, this is happening. He's breathing. Hey, this man died since Friday. Hey. This is perhaps the latest religious stand that has grabbed the attention of many. A South African preacher, Pastor Alf Lukau of the Alleluia Ministries International, lays his hands on a man lying in a coffin. Man of is commanding life. The man immediately resurrects from the dead. The video goes viral. His followers rejoice and call this a miracle. He's an awesome God. There has not been a shortage of these bizarre happenings lately, even here in Kenya. Early 2000, a preacher emerges in Nairobi, calling herself the true prophetess of the Lord. She establishes one of the biggest Christian followership in Nairobi. But just as things were about to take off, she's jailed for two years for cheating a congregation. Prophetess Lucinda Uta hit the headlines after she was found guilty of offering fake HIV cure through miracles to make money. Those who had been healed by the prayers went for further testing only to realize that their status had not changed. She was released in 2010. Then came her own son, Prophet Dr. Victor Kanyari. He stormed into the scene keen to improve on the tactics employed by his mother. Kanyari opted for some science. He would use potassium permanganate which turns purple when dissolved in water to cheat his believers that he possessed superior powers to help them prosper in life. Really, Dr. Victor Kanyari, Dania Bitia Jackie B. The Salvation Healing Ministry preacher has since rebranded to Bishop Mwangi. is keen for a comeback. And even with mounting public anger at the time to have him arrested, the police let him scot free on grounds that no one had formally lodged a complaint against him. Several years later, and the Nduta Kanyari dynasty is not letting go. Deep in the sprawling slums of Kayole is another member of the family trying to find his big break, Kanyari's younger brother, Apostle Jackson Wawero of the Ofunuo Ministries. <laughs> Classical case of three members of the same family, three different ministries, all preaching in the name of God. For quite a while now, I have been following Wawero's ministry at his Ofunuo church at Nyama Villa area in Kayole Estate. His congregants believe that he has immense powers to solve their problems. But does he? <laughs> Prophet Wawero's preaching does not start or end on the podium. I'm given hints of a hideout deep in Kayole where Prophet Wawero prepares his sermons. We've been asking residents around here to tell us where, whether they know whether this person exists in their neighborhood. And yes, this is the neighborhood. As you can see, the door is still locked, but there are activities going on given the kind of noises that we've been hearing from this particular end. A group of men and women are busy at work. This is the powerhouse, and this, the prayer warriors. Yeah. 
Apostle Wawero and his pastors preach on one of Kenya's local televisions. He displays his contacts and thereafter people call in to receive their miracles. And this is where the game begins. They have been employed to solicit money from people through phone calls. You have to collect quite enough to be guaranteed of a better commission. I have managed to convince some of the prophet's employees to capture the inside proceedings. And indeed, in a matter of hours, Wawero is seen making his way here. On a good day, he could make as much as 200,000 Kenyan shillings just from this. Well, this is Nyama Villa area here in Kayole, and it's been forever really trying to catch Jackson Wawero, the apostle at Ufunuo. And today we want to be part of the congregation and see whether we can put the hard questions to him. <laughs> On this solemn Sunday, Christians have gathered at the Ufunuo church ready to receive their blessing. Inside the church, I noticed some of the faces earlier shown to us in the powerhouse footage. It's unbelievable. It is not a very good day for me. Prophet Owero is not in the building. Part of our crew outside the church, however, notice him from a distance. It looks like someone has tipped him off that there are unwelcome guests in the church. He stays away. A crowd is starting to mill around him. We sense danger and have to leave promptly. Two of the girls working for Wawero in the powerhouse agrees to open up. When KTN News Crimes and Investigations Unit requested an interview with Prophet Wawero, he declined. In fact, he went ahead to destroy my cameraman David Srengo's equipment. Today we are meeting in court over this case. Notice how Prophet Wawero has dressed to conceal his identity in court. He is not in his usual suits. He has been released on bond and some of his workers are here to stand with him. I raise the holy one. Yes. I raise the sun that In Kenya, preachers are some of the country's most famous celebrities. The commander following like no other. Some reckon that Christians are not to question acts of men of God. They are revered. Pray, pray, pray. Pray, pray, pray. At the Jesus Teaching Ministry Center, we meet another preacher, Apostle Peter Manyuru. A man riding on a crest of a wave. He claims to have special anointing which he sells at a price for blessing even to his poor congregants. Testimonies offered in this church follow a particular trend that point to some element of coaching. KTM, kwa hakika mimi ni miona mengi yale mungu wa mentendea. So, ananja ITM, mtumia anointing mzuri na muombe na mungu wa tamuonekania. Zia ITM, Hata we pia kupitia mafuto ya takao jipaka. Kama ni magonjwa yote ya tatoka katika jina la Yesu Kristo. He turned down our request for an interview. He tells his congregants that it is only through giving that evil spirits can depart from them. Somebody say amen. amen. They make covenants so that when you go down, they are going up. But today, we are reversing it in Jesus' name. Amen. As we dedicate today, I prophesy to you, whatever is working against you, it is destroyed in Jesus' name. Destroyed in Jesus' name. Destroyed in Jesus' name. 
Can you say more fire? Offerings are made in special envelopes. Today I'm attending one of his midweek services. Visitors must first report to this desk. And here, the first thing I'm given are these envelopes. This lady wants me to put a thousand bob in each of the envelopes as an icebreaker to unlock my blessings and initiate me into the church. And more and more people desperate for blessings are coming in. I asked to be directed to the apostle's office to deliver a letter requesting for an interview. He's currently rated as one of the richest pastors in Nairobi. Contents of this magic oil have never been made public. Uh, you know, we are living in, a, um, in an environment of rapid socioeconomic change. And people have needs. And people need answers to their questions. Here are questions about uh, economy, questions about poverty, questions about sickness, questions about uh, generally prosperity and doing well. And this is the time when people are most vulnerable to any suggestions, any suggestion that uh, promises or gives them hope. So I think religion comes in as a very handy uh, as way of giving people hope uh, beyond what they can explain. So I think that that is, a, uh, I would say that this is a time of um, much vulnerability among people in Kenya as in, in, in other parts of the world. Is the, the administrators and bishops or whoever they are's office. Ah. So you it's not until a lady bishop in the ministry of prophet Dr. David O'War of the Repentance and Holiness Ministry came out to speak about her ordeal in the hands of the prophet that someone gathered courage to open up. Tell her what has happened. Dr. O'War said to be a scientist brands himself the mightiest prophet of the Lord. And when he turns out for his meetings, his followers have to prepare the way for him. His security detail, bigger than those of most senior state officers in Kenya. But some of the prophet's pronouncements have left tongues wagging. Had we tag a mighty prophet like than Jesus, the only prophet that we can say, the Wamwanzo na Mwisho ni Yesu, aliekufa na kafufuka na kwamba ataruditena. He himself called him. He presented. I meet a former pastor in the O'War ministry. He requests to have his identity protected for his own safety. He served in the ministry for over a decade, but over time he has doubted his spiritual standing, forcing him to quit. Teaching there, you are taught to exclude yourself with others. Because now you are born again, others are sinning. It's not belong to your church. It is like he is contaminating you with sin, which is totally, totally not, it is not in the Bible. Those teachings are bad. It's not in the Bible. The former pastor's experience is not far from what this former praise and worship member shares with me. I joined the ministry in the year 2013. I can't remember exactly the date, but it was in uh, the main month of uh, May. Just like the former pastor, he chooses to remain anonymous. There is an obsession with uh, Dr. Uwar. Once you join any ministry, now you have become a center of this cult. You have become a, I don't know, you, you have been radicalized now. You have to be radicalized. You have to believe in a war. You have to literally worship the man. You have to call him mightiest, mightiest. You have to call him the most transfigured, the most revered. Failure to do that, you're seen as a, an outcast. You're seen as a letdown to the ministry, a letdown to the department. So um, you generally have to worship the man. and. Um, I, I felt I felt like I felt disoriented at that point and that is when I started questioning so many things. Mm. Doctor were claiming that he is the only way to heaven. 
and that you must believe in him for you to enter heaven. That is something that is not in the Bible. That is something that Jesus never taught. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Then Dr. War comes here and tells you, you have to believe in me for you to enter heaven. Yeah. He even condemned all the churches. He said all the churches are headed to hell. I wonder where he got that from. Chakula kilikuwa kinaletwa hapa. Manake tu kama kanisa zingine watu wangeleta sadaka. Na wakileta sadaka tulikuwa tunajaza hapa. Na hii mahali yote. A couple of years ago this man too was right in the inner circle of prophet of war. He has huge reservations about the prophet. Those in the repentance and holiness ministry believe that he possesses divine powers to even resurrect the dead. He raised or resurrected Mama Rosa. We believed. That was a scam. Even uh, one of the doctors who was senior there, uh, he said there was a conversation whereby they wanted to report. So the, the mother was suffering, Mama Rosa was suffering from arthritis, arthritis of heads and legs. So that arthritis ilikuwe meingia mpaka kwa nafs. So wakati tuliambiwa tuli, tuli alikufa, alikuwa kwa koma. Alikuwa kwa koma, hakuwa mekufa. Because I believe in the Bible, those people who died, and reselected. Uh, there's nothing recorded about what they said about hell. So only those people who internet uh, said about about hell, on Christ Christ uh, said about hell. Why this person now? Even what he, she was saying, it is was a direct to, to uh, direct to, to do what uh, to, to say. He was guided how to say. Yeah, she was guided how to say. Mm. Yeah, she was not dead. Mm. She was not dead. She was in a coma. Take the time to verify who under whose name the property is. All the properties are hers, unless they have since been sold by some people. Bishop Jen Njagi's family has narrated how their daughter was duped into the ministry more than a decade ago, ditching her legal profession to join the war ministry. The family says she was dragged into the war ministry to act as a financier. For the first time you are gaining entry into this massive apartment here owned by Jen Jaggi who was once a bishop in the ministry of uh, David O'War. Well David O'War used to reside here, not just him but also some of his bishops we are told by the family that they used to stay here and used to do most of the activities here. In fact on my right side is part of the offices that we are told he used to house his main activities. So we are here to establish and talk to some of the people that were part of this particular ministry kula kwa nabii wa Mungu pamoja na maaskofu ambao walikuwa wamekuja pamoja naye kwa sababu walikuwa wanaenda kutafuta visa ya kutoka kwa nchi nje ya nchi kwa sababu ya mikutano ambayo inafanywa nje na alikuwa asimame pale riverside kwa sababu ya kinywaji ama chakula so nilipewa instructions nikaambiwa nini nitatengeneza na nikatengeneza kahawa na chai pamoja na uh, scones kulikuwa na tea items ambazo zilikuwa pale nikaambiwa nizitengeneze lakini sio mimi nilipika zilikuwa zimeletwa pale kama sadaka so nilizitayarisha na nikai present na wakakunywa chai kabla ya kutoka aliomba apewe awekewe zingine ili abebe aende nao nyumbani na hivyo ndo tulifanya mambo haya yote nilikuwa nafanya siku wa peke yangu nilikuwa na askofu ambaye ni msaidizi wake na tulipofanya haya maneno uh, tukamaliza kupak na kabeba na kaenda basi siku inayofuatia nilipokea simu nikitoka kazini nikaambiwa nisikuje kazini paka wakati nitaitwa nikawa nimeshtuka kidogo maana sikujua ni nini imeendelea hapo ndio nilikuja nika, nikajaribu ku insist kujua ni nini imefanyika nikaambiwa pana kuna shida imetokea na nabii amekuwa kiumwa na tumbo hata amekuwa kitoa damu inaonekana kulikuwa na shida na chakula kumbuka nikipokea hii simu sikuambiwa ni sumu niliambiwa tu kuna shida ya chakula na simu zilifuata kama tatu nilipigiwa na askofu mkuu na maaskofu wengine 
na nilipo nilipigiwa isimu nikiwa kwangu nyumbani unaweza tu kuimagine mshtuko ambao nilikuwa nao how bad is your Many have always questioned how a man leading a flamboyant lifestyle could run his affairs without asking for offerings from his followers. The family told journalists that some of the bishops in Prophet of War's ministry were occupying Jagi's property without paying a dime. This while also controlling the bishop's personal bank account. Since his humble beginnings in Nakuru, Owar has styled himself as Kenya's most charismatic preacher. He rarely accords TV interviews. But when he does, he directs the line of questioning. Some areas are not to be touched. This was in 2013, when television host Jeff Koinange hosted Dr. David O'War. Why does he keep that beard? No, no, okay, Jeff. It's, it's on, it's no, on Twitter. No, no, listen to me, Jeff. We agreed on this interview. <laughs> there are certain red lines okay. you cannot cross. All right. Because now Kenya has advanced our conversation. She's mature, yeah. you know. <laughs> All right. Absolutely. Let's move on. Let's move on. And only you, only you, I can allow you to say such a thing though. Thank you, my brother. Because if it were someone else, I would walk out of studio. <laughs> oh yes, oh yes, absolutely. <laughs> Even before he began his repentance ministry, a war had already courted enough controversies. Today he is fighting in a USA court to convince the judiciary that he wasn't part of a rape claim leveled against him in September 2002. At the time working for the Department of Transportation, Federal Aviation Administration in the office of the Civil Aerospace Medical Institute is said to have induced a co-worker with excess alcohol, later taking advantage of the situation and sexually assaulting the lady in question. We made efforts to reach Prophet to war for response, but our efforts went south. Our investigations unit contacted some of the wealthiest churches in town, but none was ready to accord us an interview. We wanted to know what they think of the attempt to regulate churches in Kenya. They all declined to speak to us. Among others, we contacted a flamboyant couple taking Nairobi by storm, the Reverend Alan and Kathy Kuna. They have built an empire in the last couple of years and said to be riding high in the ministry. And they have no qualms posting pictures of their larger-than-life status. They call these blessings. <laughs> There is Reverend Lucy Natasha, founder and overseer of the prophetic Latter Glory Ministries International. Her followers call her Kenya's hottest female pastor. She's eating life with a big spoon, driving big cars, complete with a flamboyant team of bodyguards. She's setting the bar for others. She couldn't comment on her newfound riches. Asking your intervention. And, uh, God says that you come to me and submit yourself and pray. And the more controversial one, Apostle James Mainanganga, he tells his congregations of how God redeemed him from the streets as a hawker, his stints in prison, and his struggle with drugs. He has quoted enough controversies, including accusation that he killed a woman in a road accident in Limuru driving his Range Rover sport machine. Today he features in the list of the wealthiest preachers in town. And there are many more we contacted. And even some foreign preachers have also found fertile ground in Kenya. Some have opened permanent churches with branches across the country. I'm seeing the court here in this divorce. 2018 at the Kasarani Indo Arena, Nairobi, a huge Christian gathering was getting underway. It was dubbed three days of angelic visitation. This Malawian preacher from South Africa was the star feature. Shafad Huxley Bushiri, popularly known as Major One, by his followers. You, from Nigeria. You, also. In his so-called prophecies, he wows his crowds by purporting to give personal details of his congregation shown by God. The founder of the Enlightened Christian Gathering has amassed immense wealth in just a short period of time. Today he is needed by a South African court for money laundering 
and fraud. In news just in, controversial prophet Shepard Bushiri has been arrested for fraud and money laundering. ENCA's Tsehohajo Moachi joins us now. Religion remains a sensitive subject in the Kenyan society. In fact, a grey area. No one has found the courage to question the conduct of church leaders. Mm. And, uh, and the knowledge that I should share. But amidst the machinist, someone is now thinking along this line. Kangema, member of parliament, Muturi Kigano, is preparing a motion that could just change the landscape. So my motion proposes to make any church that seeks to propagate Christianity to conform with several uh, parameters, uh, be accountable, show us audits, audited accounts, let's see what uh, the money is all about, show, demonstrate sense of uh, or element of charity before you go to claim tax rebates from KRI. Ni wanga inanishtua ni ile venye wanaitisha watu hizo sadaka wanaambia mtu atamrudishia. Na obvious unajua unaweza kwa umeka kaa school fees utume hiyo pesa yako. Ukishatuma unajua utarudishiwa atakwambia pesa ikienda kwa mganga irudingi. Saa inabidi unakuwa na stress mingi kwa nyumba labda unata unaweza jinyonga. Juu labda hiyo pesa ndio ulikuwa nao mbele na nyuma. Mimi nikitaka kuambia hizi sadaka hizi manini makanisa zenye zinaomba watu wanaitishwa sadaka yenyewe si za ukweli ni kunyang'anyana tu. Watu wananyang'anywa kwa kutumia neno la Mungu. Ju kwa kanisa unaweza pata waende upate kanisa yenyewe wanaomba lakini wakimaliza kanisa wanaita mikutano wanaenda kupanga kazi zingine kazi za panda begu hivi hizo za hizo panda begu kutisha watu sadaka yani hiyo kazi si mzuri ju wazazi wengi wanaumia ni kazi yenye iko na challenge si kazi mzuri sana kwa Kenya kwa wananchi ju labda for example mi labda unaweza niambia ende ukope pesa kwa mtu unitumie nikishakopa hiyo pesa ule mtu atabaki huku akinidai Na simi ni metumi hiyo pesa. Na ile miujiza nambu itatendeka, haitatendeka. Jula ni ukora hiko pale. 80% of Kenyans are Christians. And this percentage has been bulging every day. And although no one has outright judgment of how religion works, some preachers will however have you thinking twice before planting that seed. My name is Fr All right. Um, sorry I told you three, though. You saw either that it were about actually seven and uh, about six of them are from Kenya and um, you heard the narrator there telling you that nobody had the courage, nobody has had the courage to question this decadence in the church. And I think that if God has somehow raised a voice that is speaking up on these things, listen, you know, like people who consistently are vouching for Apostle Kimani, uh, that John Kimani is a man of God. All right, let's take it from you that he's a man of God. And nobody is saying that he's not a man of God. He is a man of God. But understand that when, when you come in a place and you have 60% of things going wrong or 61% of things going wrong, actually in examination, if you have 39, uh, you know, score, 39 marks, it is, you know, you didn't, you have not passed. It is still a failure. All right. Um, Though I still believe that in every society, you still have some very good, intelligent men and children of God that are not physically present on the social media. Now, all these people that majority of the people, not all of them, majority of the people you have today masquerading as pastors on social media, those are the problems that you have. Not all of them, but majority of them are the problems that we have. Those that when they bought a car, they will send it on social media. They built a house, they said, said, you know, send it on social media. And then they will have a camera focused on a very terribly sick person, you know, and that sick person must recover. Now, that is for me, you know, a very brutal red flag of faking miracles. The truth is that. By the special grace of God, I believe totally in miracles. But there is no man anywhere, there is no man anywhere that will say, I will heal. There could be a person that God may have told, all right, as you are going to the meeting today, I'm going to heal a particular sickness. Now, 
when that person comes, he speaks with boldness. He doesn't know who the person is, and he doesn't know when and where the person will be in the church. But you see people, you know, like your guy there, Alf Lukao, that boldly resurrected the dead. You see, he became Alpha and Omega. Maybe the Alf in his name, I don't know actually if it is Alpha Numeric, Alpha Numeric, or the Alpha and Omega that we know. So, the Alpha in his name seems to have confused him and he now begins to think himself as the beginning. Alright? He sees himself you know, at parity with Jesus. So, so they brought in a, you know, um, a, 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 they brought in a hearse in the church and the lady pastor, you know, cannot do without this Messiah. Pastor Alf, Pastor Alf, there is an ambulance out there with a dead body that has been dead since on Friday. What a stupid thing to do. You see, and Alf was like, eh? Let's go. Because he already has the power to resurrect. Man, <laughs> there is nothing like that. When Apostle Paul, I mean Apostle Peter and John prayed for the sick. There was no, there, there was no, there was no gathering. In fact, in fact, when they did that, they, nobody knew who did it. They only told the guys, silver and gold we don't have, but that such as we have we give unto thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. The man limped. He standed, he stood up and started walking. And nobody knew until the testimony began to fly. So they didn't do it to take glory. They didn't do it to come in, in you know, into the public. Um, uh, I, I don't know how to put it now. Into the eyes of the public so that they will be popular. But today you are seeing pastors that are projecting themselves, becoming more popular, more powerful than Jesus himself, who they claim to serve. Things that Jesus didn't do. Flamboyant life that the Bible outrightly condemned. If you are a Christian and you are as rich as Elon Musk and you have Christ, even the Elon Musk that is that rich is not as flamboyant as the pastors, some of these pastors, some of these rebranded witch doctors that we have today, some of these hush puppies on pulpits. Majority of them are hush puppies. They are, they are frosters on pulpits, but they are using you know, pastoral regalia to cover up for their wickedness. So when you see this brother, Takim, you know, busting out, or you see any other person that is speaking, but mind you that I have said that it's not everybody who speak like that that actually has the interest of the gospel at heart. Some are doing that to be popular on YouTube, to be popular on Instagram and on Facebook. Some of them don't even know Christ. They are not even born again. But they do it just to, uh, to be known and so, to, so that people will follow them. You may also be looking at me, you know, as one of them. Yeah, I could be one of them who are just doing th these things in order to be noticed. But I want you to understand that God takes record of every one of us, whatever we do, everything we do. I remember in 2020, during lockdown was when this was, I, you know, was conceived. I dreamt and I woke up. What fell from my mouth is the body of Christ. And my wife said, you know, he, she tapped me and I, I woke up from that dream. That was a burden because I knew the kind of prayers that we did during that time. It was a burden and that burden has been there. So some of you may also misunderstand what we are doing. We are not doing it to castigate your pastors. I see a lot of angry people. And if I will advise you, I will advise you not to be angry because somebody is talking about the person you think you know. You, you shouldn't actually be angry because somebody is speaking about the person. You only think you know this person. You don't know him. My brother, you don't know him. My sister, you don't know him. How be it? I have never and I will never generalize that every pastor is, is evil. You see, in that commentary, you see what the narrator said, that people revere pastors, people respect pastors. Because pastors are supposed to actually be respected. Pastors are supposed to be held in high esteem. Because if not that they have sold their garments in blood and in all kinds of dirtiness, they have mired themselves and many of them are not even ready to come out. Because they have been 
empowered, employed, and anointed by Satan. This is the reason why. In, in the olden days, when you hear the name pastor, you hear the, you know, somebody say, I'm a clergyman, I'm a pastor. You see, you take him for his word. Anything that he tells you, you believe it. Because you don't believe that a man of God, a servant of God, can lie. A servant of God can be untrue. But today, reverse is the case. Well, this video has been too long, and I wish that you will share this video. Put down your comments in the comment section, and don't forget to like the video, please. God bless you. And may I invite you to join our prayer line if you want to join us, you know, to pray tonight by 11 p.m. Nigerian time. Uh, get in contact with me, you know, through the number that you, you see displayed on the screen. I will see you in the next video. I will see you in the next video. Till then. Uh, this is the number in case you have not seen it really well. This is the number here. This is the number in case you have not seen it well. Contact me via this number and God than that. But I'll away from that, in what could be described as one of the biggest monetary scams of all.